out of five stars it's a actually out of ten stars I, I rate this at eight out of ten or basically four out of five stars it's a good but not excellent CAD program it's the weakest areas that it has in the problem areas are the text and dimension tools the biggest problem that I have with it because it doesn't work properly none of the text or dimension tools except for two out of a handful work properly in 3D mode they work perfectly fine in 2D mode I think literally every tool has no problem in 2D mo mode but in 3D mode uh, you got you start to get problems they're in cap uh, in capabilities or the things that are harder to, to use and uh, an example would be this box text if you if you do the box text you put something down I'll show you okay Now think if I scale the text down, you can actually start to see what it says. If I put it at 288, you can't see 64. There. Inspector. And with the inspector, you get the... Uh, Object properties, pen properties, fill properties, text properties, dimension properties, and the gripper properties. Tributes data for the object, pen properties, fill properties, text dimension, gripper properties. So just pause the video to see any of this. Alright, so I'm going out of inspector. But here's an example of uh, you know, if I go over here to rotate tool, you press control, you hold control key down in the lower left corner of the keyboard. Usually is where it's at. You pick a point, reference point, origin, good enough. Left click and hold. And then all of a sudden you can see the box, but you can't see the damn text. That's an example of how most of these text tools and most of the dimension tools, almost all of them in fact, don't, don't work properly in 3D mode. I'm in 3D mode right now, by the way. <clears throat> Alright, so, but if you go and exactly on press the D key uh, to get an or well whatever shortcut key it is I, I have it set so the D key gets me right back to uh, you see the top of front view I believe and exactly straight on and then I can see it again I don't actually see the box uh, after you've done using the tool you can't see the box but once you get off of the plane and you start to see it at any other angle uh, than what you worked it with, then in 3D mode you can't see the damn text, but you can see the box you put the text in. But it's still technically there. It's just that you can't see what you did while working with it. And you can even click view, redraw screen, it still doesn't show. So, but with the with the horizontal text, I can put something down there, whatever, and then all of a sudden, you know, if I use the rotate tool, I press the D key, you can see both of them. But while the box text doesn't work, the the horizontal text will. Horizontal text tool does work.
at an angle. You can see it at an angle. So this is what I'm complaining about on the forum. The guy didn't understand me, obviously. He said something technical. I don't see any missing files. He said something like that. I guess it can appear in my computer and see stuff. Um, and, uh, but only about my chat program, I guess it is. Well, well, well so here we go. Uh, it's, you know, text and... And, uh, that's the problem, all right? That's an example of a problem with the text and dimension tools. Now, even with that problem, it's a very colorful and highly recommended uh, capable program. It has solid surface and mesh modeling. It has rendering that's near next to top quality rendering, photorealistic rendering, but it certainly isn't the very, very best you can possibly get. What it does not have is animation. It cost me a little less than $200. It was on a discount during the holiday season last year, 2016, is when I got it. Right now it's October of 2017 when I'm doing this review. I took about five months roughly to you, I, I literally, I've literally used every tool in the ACAD Pro version 10, which is what this is. And uh, I can say with a certainty, and I went through all the menu systems and the help files and the help tutorials that are listed here, as you can see. And I can tell you with a cert certainty that this is the kind of... Uh, You know, based upon the, you know knowing everything about this CAD program and knowing that there was an error, but it's only about 0.3% of the time that I estimated that it happened. You can see that error when the ver you use the verify tools, especially the verify distance tool, and you can see that if it's not obvious enough, it's at least suspicious. And then you'd use the verify tool, click on a corner or wherever else on the object. <clears throat> corner to corner, corner to midpoint, wherever else there snaps. I just use the default snaps the program comes with. I'm pretty sure is what I set it to. And I, I know you see a black background. Where where I did that, by the way, is file uh, preferences, colors, background, solid color option, color black in color black. Now that's how I did that. If you click on the color, it literally pops this up with a color palette. You choose the color, and that's the background. The foreground is green, but that is as any objects. It's really what that means. It's foreground for objects. Black background is the color that you, uh, the color of your damn screen in the work in the, the CAD program. The color of the screen that's in the view, work view, uh, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's how I did that. Just so you know, uh, my, the tools that I, the window uh, inspector and window concept explorer, there you get to your layers, turn on and off layers, and your symbols. Don't use the entity. I don't use the entities. You can. I don't use the entities ever. Entities. I don't know what that's for. I don't care. I don't use that. Layers and symbols. I use that sometimes, not too often. And um, it's got a ton of different symbols. Like for instance, uh, mechanical. They got stuff like 3D fasteners, blind, blind taps. You can click and drag this into the, the view and scale it up because it's too small now. Rotate it. Scale it. Move it. That's the gripper, by the way, what they call the gripper. Gripper properties, click on the eye, that's the inspector. There's another way, like I said, in the window inspector, to get to inspector. There's a third way, which is double-clicking on an object.
And that brings up the inspector, double clicking on an object. But it has to be an object that's not near another one. Or at least it uh, depends on your settings, but at least for default, uh, that's it. I'm not getting into too much detail, it's going to make this a short video. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you everything the program has. Uniform scaling, these are my settings for gripper. Enable or disable gripper, but you got all these settings for it. It gets pretty complex, uh, I just have it on these settings. Uh, that's what I recommend. So look at that, pause the video. Alright, so continuing on. The window, concept explorer, get to your layers or symbols. Window, inspector, all these object properties, pin properties, uh, pin fill properties, which is like hatches for hatches. Hatch pattern or filling for filling color. It's sort of like hatches. hatches. Alright, so the text properties, dimension properties, and the gripper properties. And if you do modify, you have a check for gripper, and that's turning on and off the gripper. But it doesn't let you do anything else than turn on and off the gripper. But to do the settings for the gripper, you have to go into the inspector. To turn it just on and off the gripper, you can, if you want, just go in the menu for modify menu and then turn on and off the gripper. Now I'm going to show you all the tools, hover over. Yeah, here's five minutes of hovering over everything and showing you all the menu and, and tools, but not the sub tools. Well, uh, <clears throat> This is a help file about way about the line tool. Whatever tool you have selected, it brings up the help file. It does use the internet in your default browser. Pops this up. This is the website. It's a file actually on the internet. It's bringing up the help file. You do have to have an internet connection in there to do this. You don't get the help files without it. You can bring up the PDF without the internet, I believe. Where you get that, hold on a second, is uh, if you click on help, then you go into the user guide, you get the PDF that way. So again, this VCAD Pro version 10 has mesh modeling, solid modeling, and, and surface modeling. It has hatches, text, and dimension. It has 2D tools and 3D tools. <clears throat> it has a magnet tool, which is a very unique tool. Uh, it works like a magnet. It brings one object up against another object based upon surface, I believe. Forget if it's surface necessarily. Uh, I think it has to be though. Okay, so just here it is. Uh, going through the menu, then I'll go and hover over every icon. Hold on a second.
Okay, that was the rundown. Okay, by the way, you hold control, click the reference, left click while holding control. There's a reference point. Every single time you do the dynamic rotator, the same thing as the orbit tool in Google SketchUp, you have to do this in order to give a reference point to your dynamic rotate or your orbit. If you don't, then it doesn't always work right in this CAD program. But it's not a bother, it's, it's okay with me, it's not a big deal. Um, a little more work, but it's a, it, has, it has less errors than Google SketchUp has, uh, the free version at least. Anyway. VCAD Pro had an error, but I could see the error of the Verify tool. I think I already said that uh, earlier in the video. Um, so I have to end this video pretty fast because the other one was over an hour. I tried to do this as a re, redone. Like I said, it's an 8 out of 10, and below in the description I'll say all the recommended programs I recommend with this to use. Um, and the last one I, I, I actually showed in the video these websites, and I'm not going to do that this time around, but I'll just put it in the description below, so be sure and check that out for all the programs. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are, are low cost, but they cost something. And, uh, 
uh, uh, there's a separate program for rendering even higher quality than this program can. The VCAD Pro does do rendering, but not as high quality as possible. And uh, it does not do any animation. <coughs> um, it does do a lot of modeling, though. It doesn't, it's a little weak in the uh, mesh modeling, so I recommend another program called Sculptures with that. But like I said, all the program names and all the program websites are going to be listed in the description below this video, so please check that out. Um, and then there's the Share Experience Capture. Uh, I recommend to do that to screen capture, uh, not necessarily this program, um, so much as the Home Designer Software program I'm going to recommend. And uh, you do that, you can just choose the architectural version and you can do what they call something different maybe but it's basically the same thing as model the sheet in VCAD Pro and maybe they call it construction drawing but it's also called uh, aka model the sheet I'm pretty sure it's the same thing it's very similar at least and you get this title block uh, basically and you could google image that and get a free google image and you could do some picture editing and I'll put that in the description about Microsoft Paint free version, a free photo editing software that comes with your operating system, I'm pretty sure. So, um, it does have a Helix tool, and a lot of these tools basically work. To get a lot of these complex 3D objects, you almost have to always, or most of the time at least, use these 2D tools in 3D mode to basically what they want to call wireframe uh, I think there's another name for it that the program has profile or something like that anyways basically what it is is a bunch of lines in 3D mode and you use those lines to make reference points or lines for extrusion along curves etc you know that stuff. To make a screw, for instance, you need these lines. And anything really complex, almost, you to need lines. Well, you could do some of this stuff like subtract solid, and uh, that would maybe you wouldn't need a line for that. Uh, you might want one, though, to first make the solid. Um, so, almost always, if not really always, you need these lines to, to first use and then to make the solids. Or surfaces, you know, maybe even yeah, even surfaces you need the lines to make. Yeah. So that's how the program basically works to do complex 3D objects. It works off of lines, and it's it, and they they call them curves, but they're basically lines that are curved lines in, in that case, and. Uh, lines that are either straight or curved and spiral or whatever other shapes that you know they're basically still lines in my mind. and uh, that's how it does that um, so I I'm going to bring up a file that's a little complex that I did about Zooming it out is the keys to the right of the P, little brackets to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. Control left click to do the orbit each time you do the orbit. Spacebar, pull the spacebar down. The hand pops up when you hold the spacebar down. You left click while you do that. You left click and hold the spacebar down at the same time, but first press the spacebar and then hold the mouse button down. So right now I'm holding the left mouse button down and the space bar down at the same time. Not letting go of the keys or the buttons. And move the mouse ball, trackball if you know trackball like I do, for the mouse itself if you don't. And then there you go, there's the pan, that's how you pan. Hold the space bar down, left click. If you don't left click it doesn't move yet. So that's how you pan. Now rotates the rotate tool, zoom in and out. It's the two keys to the right of letter P on the keyboard. There's also plus and minuses, the two different plus and minuses on the keyboard if you want to use those instead. Um,
<clears throat> now, um, sometimes I use zoom window to get an accurate zoom. That way, um, so they do have 3D print tools. Of course, there's some 3D printers. VCAD Pro does do some rendering and 3D printer use. Keyshot, it's got Keyshot uh, integration or use um, for efficiency or something like that. But Keyshot is a rendering program that's separate from VCAD Pro. And what that does is it converts or makes pictures out of your 3D models. If you want a highly detailed, lifelike picture out of your 3D model or models, Use Keyshot. You know, well, I don't recommend Keyshot. I actually recommend Fluid Ray RT instead. That's also in the description below. Um, all right. So, yeah, I already gave you the rundown of all these uh, tools, and you can see just basically what it has and doesn't have. And I'm also gonna show you this other one right here, very very quick, uh, so you can see some of the capabilities this CAD program has. It can do spiral staircases, it can do helixes, it can do all sorts of uh, indentations and solids and curved surfaces and it can do all sorts of neat acrobatic stuff. So just give it, okay here it popped up now. <clears throat> now um, That's the what this is is what you're looking at here is a 3D model and only mesh modeling that I did a while ago, a few weeks ago or so um, of a tower about a two-story tower not including the top area two-story tower with a shack beside it attached to it and a horse stall uh, a little ways away pretty close to it, basically part of the area. So it's a medieval kind of tower, shack, and horse stall setup uh, that I did. Only mesh modeling. I, I, I actually prefer solid modeling for most of my work, 80 to 90 percent of my work. And I didn't do it this time around to this, because I wanted to convert it to uh, so when you exported this kind of problem, anyways, I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. It's the other one went over an hour and I had an error and I couldn't even save. But uh, I think what I did, I I think I clicked something wrong on the ShareX program. I think it was my user error, but I, I don't really remember for sure. Um, could have been a technical issue because I'm working on a laptop with an internal video card. So I don't recommend that. Don't do that. I'm, I'm doing it. Intel HD, uh, not 4000, just an older version. And I can barely use this CAD program. Sometimes it crashes if I get a larger CAD file than this one right here. It will sometimes, about a tenth of the time, 10 to 20 percent of the time, it, it ends up crashing after an hour or two of using it and it just randomly crashes. <laughs> And, and this, this push-pull tool does crash the program and no other tool does but like I said I'm almost totally sure it's just because I have an internal video card it's, it's integrated video card as a part of the processor for CPU um, not a separate video circuit card and uh, so I recommend uh, the graphics card or video card uh, dedicated or not dedicated I mean but separate a separate a graphics card or video card, um, separate circuit, an uh, actual physical circuit card. That's a video card or graphics card. And and not only that, I recommend using a desktop with the graphics card or video card in it. That's that has its own. Uh, that's not part of the processor. Don't do that. Uh, they call it integrated or. Um, internal video cards. Don't don't do it. Don't don't ever do that with this with this CAD program, with VCAD Pro. Uh, I'm not recommended. Uh, if you do, you're like me. You have problems. I'm about to get a desktop pretty soon, by the way. But anyways, um, 
before I have some kind of crash again, I better end this video. And uh, by the way, you know, you, the focus for this CAD program does mainly focus on and work with your uh, video card. It doesn't really care too much about other aspects about your PC's performance, unfortunately, such as whether or not you have a regular hard drive or an SSD, whether or not you have a lot of RAM or fast RAM or system memory, and all that basically doesn't matter that much, just a little bit. <clears throat> And uh, so it's, a, it's almost a, a near total focus on the video card and how much RAM or memory that, that's actually on the video card or graphics card itself. Um, anyways, I, I gotta end this pretty soon, but I want to show you a little more detail about my. Let's about my tower. I can change the color of. Uh, not that, but I wanted to show you I can change the color of, of this little ring or anything else really. And let's make this ring blue. I'll make it blue. I'm mean, going to we're going to go into an object properties. Either double click on that object, or you can click on the eye in the upper right corner. It'll bring up this inspector once you're in the inspector you click on the left icon which is object properties click on the tab after doing that click on the tab that says attributes then click on if there's color to choose from all right i'm going to show you blue apply so there it is uh, there's a blue ring there around it. So it does different colors if you want the CAD program to get different colors as you're working with it. When you render it, it's probably not going to show blue. It's just going to show the material and the color of the material that you set, just so you know. Now something to keep in mind is the ambient light settings. Sometimes you want ambient occlusion and intensity, but you don't ever probably want to red mess around with the red, green, and blue. Uh, not if you're like me. I don't recommend it. But this is something you need to keep in mind uh, more than most things anyways in this category. Right now, right? So, um, What else I should say is just the most the tools you'll use the most is this inspector and the selection tool. Sometimes the push pull is if you're doing you know, some mesh modeling. Um, but if you're doing complex mesh modeling, I recommend that sculptures program. I'll put it in the description below. So I like this. The text and dimensions need to be uh, worked on and like I said at the beginning of the video about that and how that's a problem. Hopefully uh, the developers see this and they understand or somebody that works for the company they make this be able to work like this horizontal text and it's called length dimension. Especially like two points along curve for length dimension. It's also aka you know uh, dimension along curve. Yeah, you could also call it, uh, well it's officially called length dimension though, but it only works along a curve. And it, you know, not a straight line ever, I don't think. It actually literally has to be curved and not any line, but straight. Um, so, you know, and it can work anywhere in 3D, 3D space without messing with or adjusting the work plane. And so, I think that's a good thing. Um, I wish that it was for all these tools. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I should say that this should, should, should have some kind of option to make sure that the dimensions could be worked on like the, along the X, Y, and Z planes, or I mean not planes necessarily, but axes, I guess you want to think of it as. 
or both plane and axis, same thing basically. All right, so I, I think the option should stay where you could dimension along those only, uh, but there should be something where you're not limited necessarily by that. Um, so I, yeah, it basically they say there should be some very big button somewhere uh, up underneath the top menu, uh, maybe and added a whole different thing near help or something like that just before between window and help about toggling between uh, the ability to work with 3D compatibility mode or you want to call it 3D mode. For text and dimensions or not so that way you could still work like they already have it set or you could choose to work like they don't have it set and uh, the way I would want it to be most of the time but maybe not always so sometimes actually would want to work dimensioning only along the X Y and Z axis I have to admit that that would be good but uh, a lot of the times but most of the time I don't think I would actually uh, want that. See, that's that's the big complaint with this CAD program um, that I have. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, use a handful of different programs with this, depending on your needs, and I'll put them in the description below. Mm -hmm. That's where layers was, but by the way. I never use web publish. Um, I think I already showed you the preferences to get the black background. Easy on the eyes, I will. Okay. So have a good day. Uh, my name is Kevin Eidsmore, by the way. And, uh, at Eidsmore on Twitter. I'll put that in the description, too, if you want to contact me. Um, my contact info is on the Thetaplex PC um, section of my website, which is there's a link on, on Twitter for the website. Uh, so do a little searching around and find that phone number and or email on the Thetaplex PC website, which is a link that comes off of my idesmore.weebly.com website, which is a link that's posted on the Twitter profile and that's the what I'm gonna post in the description below is the Twitter profile. Okay, so uh, please like, share and subscribe. I don't know that I'm gonna do any future videos, but if you want to subscribe go ahead. I mean what I'm gonna do is more about the try and start up this uh, which I have yet to do about the <clears throat> CAD to uh, Minecraft to CAD uh, stuff and I have yet to get into that. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it will happen sometime in the future is my plan. So I'm mostly doing it for fun. Hopefully I'll make some money with the, that or something else I do. Um, but I hope you in, enjoyed this review of VCAD Pro, and I hope you get it and all the other recommended pro programs and softwares in the description below to use with VCAD Pro or maybe even totally separately, um, depending on your needs, you know. Um, so that's about all I have to say. Uh, at Eisenhower on Twitter, I'll put it in the description.